Hello and welcome to Rose Red Homestead where we are camping with John and Cindy in our respective trailers in the beautiful Bryce Canyon National Park. And we were up here for dinner last night, um, up here meaning up to their trailer. Our trailer is down in the flats, theirs is up in the beautiful ponds. Yes, beautiful. And Cindy was showing us some things that they do in their trailer, and I was so impressed with this. You know, we talk about preparedness in so many different contexts, but this is one that perhaps not very many of us have thought about, and that is how, if the, for those that own um, RVs, trailers, or anything of similar nature, there are ways to do preparedness that perhaps you haven't thought about, and ways that could save your life. And so Cindy is going to explain her system and what they do with their trailer to make it a fabulous, fabulous um, tool for emergency preparedness. So Cindy? Thank you. Recently we were involved in, an, in a community emergency preparedness fair where we pulled our trailer, we displayed, John displayed many ways of off-grid cooking. We used our food storage meals, but in the trailer, this was a big hit, a show and tell, if you will, of our emergency storage in the trailer. And it's a plan that I believe in that I've come up with several different ways. This one is adapted to the trailer. You see bins in front of you, some re purposed containers with foodstuffs in. The plan is to have these in the trailer and these fit nicely under our bed in the trailer. We bought them specifically so they can stack a small one on top of the large utilizing the space well under the bed. These bins are titled breakfasts, lunches, two full of dinners, and one bake baking and cooking basics. Along with the other bins up front, we could live in a trailer for likely a month. But the bins, the system here is, for example, each meal, this is the breakfast bin, I have five breakfasts. To serve each meal twice, <laughs> you need twice the ingredients for each meal. All the breakfast ingredients are contained in here, along with recipes to make those meals. I have some convenience foods. You remember in all of our talk about emergency preparedness, it's what works for you. Store what you use and use what you store. I will begin with prepared mixes. When I run out, we will have muffins from the ingredients that I have packed. So in this bin, are the ingredients for five breakfasts. I'll show you in a minute everything here. Cream of wheat, pancakes, oatmeal, scrambled eggs or French toast with syrup, and muffins and canned fruit. Boom, 10 breakfasts. So here twice, so you have 10 days worth of breakfast. 10 here. days of breakfast, five breakfasts, two times each. Same with lunches. Five lunches, two times each, peanut butter and jam sandwiches, tuna sandwiches, macaroni and cheese, chicken snoodle noop, you know, and spam fried rice. The first time Cindy said chicken snoodle noop, I just laughed. I said, you got your words mixed up. She said, I've said it that way for 20 years. And when one of Pam's subscribers said, we say that too, so I was not alone. <laughs> but here are the recipes that I need for preparing those meals. This one is stir fried rice and chicken snoodle noop along with how I will, and I'll display and show you, this is a combination. It works for us. Some of our home produced mm -hmm. food, some packaged store bought, some of our freeze dried, making it possible to make all these meals that we could serve from our trailer. Dinners, because dinner contains a little bit more. This bin has two dinners in it, Rarotonga rice with chicken, and chicken tortilla soup. So two chicken meals in here, twice for each dinner. And this is another dinner bin. The other three dinners are beef stew with biscuits from scratch, spaghetti with meatballs, garlic breadsticks, and then the last one is chili with beans with cornbread muffins. So this contains enough to feed two people 30 meals. We could live for 10 days, three meals a day in our trailer. Plus with other basics, we can extend 
And I wanted to mention bread, how important it is to have ingredients to make bread for us because our meals will use bread as toast, as uh, sandwich bread, and for an accompaniment for dinner if we so choose. This bin is the baking and cooking bin, but it's most important, and I will tell you why, and that is because one of us has a sweet tooth, and I have to have caramel popcorn um, at least twice a month, and so we have all the means to pop the popcorn. John pops the popcorn, and I make the caramel, and we produce caramel popcorn plus desserts of brownies. There's a mix, and fruit crisp made from canned or home bottled fruit and other ingredients from scratch. Plus, if um, basics, if I run out of things, I have butter powder, I have instant yeast, I have from our freeze dryer, I'll show you this too, egg powder that will rehydrate, reconstitute to make uh, what we need. But this is what I wanted to show you, economical, tasty, made from scratch. We prefer our own cooking, usually, to anyone else's and to uh, prepared, purchased foods. Because I'm going to need to make bread often, I have an extra bin of bread flour, all-purpose flour, and then just in case, I've repurposed some nut and candy containers for macaroni, popcorn, sugar, pinto beans, jasmine rice, and regular rice. So we may take a break for a minute and then I'll show some of these things so that you see that we have everything we need. I get to unpack one of the lunch bins so we will discover together what is here. So this is mayo, some spam, more spam, What's this? Spaghetti, just broken just noodles. Broken, oh, okay. Chicken snoodle. Nope, those are the snoodles. Those are the snoodles. <laughs> some peanut butter. Some relish. Some soy sauce. Blackberry jam. Cindy makes fabulous jam. That's what this is. And some fruit cocktail. And this is tutti frutti jam. Tutti frutti. You gave some of that to yes, us this today. afternoon. Peach jam with pineapple and cherries in it. And there are three boxes of mac and cheese. Freeze dried peas and carrots for stir fried rice. Yeah, yeah. With the spam, spam stir fried rice. And then a couple of cans of tuna. Roto chicken, half chicken. What's this? That, that is the chicken for the meal that requires chicken in lunch, which is chicken snoodle noop. Okay, then. <laughs> How fun is this? <laughs> My goodness, you have just done such a great job getting everything so organized. Well, thank you. And you may notice there was no rice in there for my stir-fried rice, but we have bins of rice down here, so we are covered. And I get to unpack the dinner bin to show you some of our meals for dinner. The first one is beef stew with home bottled beef and stew vegetables and biscuits from scratch, my trusty cooking basics bin. And then another meal is spaghetti. Over here with spaghetti, I opted for powdered mixes so I didn't have the bulk and the glass in the kit. So spaghetti sauce and then all the tomato that you need to make that with freeze-dried meatballs and veg all for the vegetable for the meals and garlic breadsticks from scratch. The third dinner on this in this bin is chili with beans using freeze-dried hamburger and other ingredients I have in there and then cornmeal to make cornbread muffins. So those are three dinners, 10 dinners in this bin using some of the extras we have here. Well, this is so exciting and such a good idea. And you have tailored this exactly to the foods that you and John like to eat. That's right. And, um, and so it is important that you pack your own recipe. And actually in some of our cookbooks, we have meals that would be perfect for this. That's right, and some of these are my meals from our cookbook. I thought they were. I thought they sounded familiar. So it, it, it is in our food storage book. Right, comfort okay. food for uncomfortable times. Right, 
and um, we're going to be having a book sale coming up on my birthday, oh. which is midsummer, late summer. <laughs> okay, so I have a question or two. Oh, please. So you've packed all of these, and they're under your bed, and they're in the dark. How, how do you rotate these? These are going to expire. So what do you do for rotating? That's a really good question and one that I put some thought into. And because I'm in these bins a little bit as we camp and I didn't bring enough jam or whatever, I borrow from the bins. But to ensure that we are using and rotating them, I thought that the last two camping trips of our summer season into the fall, September and October, we will have these meals. For the, the days that we camp, we will use things up and then we'll replenish these bins next spring when we begin our camp season next spring. But this gives me tremendous security just knowing I have this. Yes. We, we had a family member whose tow vehicle broke down for eight days. They were stranded somewhere in their trailer. And if we'd had this, they could have fed his family of four during that time. But we just feel it's so important to have options. So these foods are basically untouchable because these are your emergency. That's except right. Except if you run out of something and right. then you replenish it. Right. Okay. All right. So that's really good to know. So if you like this idea, then you can start putting your own meals together based on the things that you like. Now, I'd like to bring John in because as we were having this discussion, and John, why don't you come on yes, this? Okay. Actually, stand on the other side of Cindy so that yes, Mike will yes, pick yes, you yes. up. <laughs> so, John, as uh, Cindy was showing me these things, you mentioned some bins that you have ready in the garage in case of an emergency where you need to bug out. You were telling us that you could probably get these things loaded and your trailer hooked up and be out of the driveway in, what did you say, 30 minutes? Oh, 30 minutes, easily. Yeah, we could load up the trailer and haul it out. Um, I, I kind of think of it as our bug out kits that we have. Uh, we have about eight uh, that we've assembled over time because we have things scattered all throughout the garage and the storage shed and the house. And so we've assembled them all into bins and have them just ready to go, have them labeled. So we have uh, fire, we have light, we have first aid kits, we have shelter, we have rope and we have tarps. Um, let's see, we have a lot of MREs that we can just grab and go. Uh, there were eight. Winter winter clothing was one, I think. Right, right. well, tools from living in Wyoming. Uh, tools, thank you, honey. <laughs> tools was one of the eight. And so we have these bins that we will just put into the trailer. And when a fire comes up over the hill, which it did uh, probably eight years ago, and everybody had to be evacuated, it, had we lived in this subdivision at the time, we would have hooked up our trailer, we would have gone to the garage, we would have grabbed those bins, put them in the trailer, we would have had these down underneath the bed, and with the MREs, we could have lived for a long time. Well, I think that this is a fabulous idea, how to turn your RV into a Noah's Ark, essentially. <laughs> um, and for emergency preparedness, it is just such a wonderful concept. So thank you both for sharing. Thank you. It's fun. It we I, we fun. love this. And our supporters all the time say, show more Cindy and John, show more Cindy and John. <laughs> so this is one that we hadn't planned on doing until I saw what you have. Right. And then there we have it. Thank you. So thank you so much for being with us. And we will see you at our very next video, wherever in the world we may be. <laughs> see ya. <laughs>